Hello everyone. I am Dr. Tejavati Nagaraj, Professor and Head, Oral Medicine and Radiology Department, Sri Rajarani College of Dental Sciences, Bangalore. Today I will be discussing about the faulty radiographs. I am going to discuss only about the intraoral radiographs. Coming to the introduction, what are faulty radiographs? Or when do you call a radiograph is faulty? Good quality radiographs should have image with optimum density and contrast, image with minimum distortion, image with sharp borders and maximum details. That is the density should be good, the contrast should be good, there should not be any distortion of the image, the image should be sharp and maximum details. With all these we can give a very good diagnosis of any disease or any disorder. For a good radiograph, the contrast has to be good, the density has to be good, minimum distortion should be there, the image should be sharp with maximum details. These are the must for a good radiograph. Coming to the common causes of faulty radiographs. We come across faulty radiographs in intraoral periapical radiography. What are the common causes of faulty radiographs? The first is the light radiograph. When you take a radiograph, it might appear lighter. What is the reason for this? It could be due to the processing errors. Under processing errors, we have underdevelopment. That is, when the temperature is too low. That is, when the temperature, that is during the cold climate, when the temperature is too low, time too short. When you keep the developer very, for a very short time in the developing solution, thermometer inaccurate. In western countries, we use the thermometer to know the temperature of the developing solution. In case the thermometer is inaccurate and not functioning properly. Okay, all these causes under development. These are the processing errors I am telling you about. Second is depleted developer solution. In case the developer is quite old, it is depleted, it gives a light radiograph. Diluted or contaminated developer. The developer could have become diluted because of more water or contaminated with fixer, any fault in the developer causes light radiograph. And again, excessive fixation. The film has to be left in the fixer unless you are able to see a good contrast image. In case you leave it for longer time in the fixing solution, because of excessive fixation, you get a light radiograph. These are the causes for light radiographs due to the processing errors. We have light radiographs due to the technical errors, that is due to the machine fault, that is under exposure. That is when the film is exposed for much less time than required. Insufficient MA, that is insufficient milliamperes, insufficient KVP, insufficient kilovolt potential, insufficient time, film source distance too great in case the collimator is placed quite far away from the film and film packet reversed in mouth. All these also causes light radiograph. We have light radiographs due to the technical errors as well as the processing errors. Both can give us light radiographs. If you come across light radiograph, you should be able to say what the reason is. Is it due to the underexposure or due to under processing? Next is the dark radiograph. Again here we have the processing errors. First is overdevelopment, that is temperature too high, when it is too humid, when the temperature is quite high, we get a dark radiograph. In case time too long, if the film is placed for a longer time in the developing solution, it gives a dark radiograph. Developer concentration too high, newly prepared solution, that is freshly prepared solution, the concentration will be quite high. The moment you put the film, it gets processed. So, developer concentration too high. Third one is inadequate time in fixer. In case the film is not fixed properly, again we get a dark radiograph. Fourth reason is accidental exposure to light. Even before, while it is getting processed, you bring it to expose it, the film to light, it becomes a dark radiograph. Improper safe lighting. Safe lighting could be due to various reasons. It could be due to your opening of the door, opening of the ventilator, accidental exposure can cause accidental exposure of the film to the light. 
So, at simple exposure to light causes dark radiograph, improper safe lighting. The safe lighting, there could be a crack in the safe lighter filter. Somebody could just open the, come inside with a torch or with a mobile. In such times, as improper safe lighting, it causes dark radiograph. Sixth one, storage of film without shielding at too high temperature or past expiry date. Again, when the films are stored without shielding, that is, the external film should be stored separately, the internal film should be stored separately, and they should not be stored at high temperature. And even the films with expiry date should not be used. All these will cause dark radiographs. Again, you have dark radiograph due to the overexposure. Dark radiograph, earlier I told you it was due to the processing errors. Now the overexposure is due to the technical errors. That is, excessive milliamperes, excessive kilovolt potential, excessive time when the film is exposed for a longer time than needed and film source distance too short if the collimator is placed very close to the film also causes dark radiograph. Similarly, for the light radiograph, you have processing errors and technical errors. Similarly, here we have dark radiograph which is happened due to the processing as well as the technical errors, overexposure. Next is insufficient contrast. I said the contrast means it should appear white and black. White is radio opaque, black is radio lucent. When you see a radiograph, you should be able to see the sufficient amount of contrast and density has to be good. In sufficient contrast, we are not able to appreciate the details. This happens due to underdevelopment. The film is not developed properly. Underexposure, that is, it is exposed for a much less time. Excessive kilovolt potential, the KVP, due to some voltage fluctuation, could have gone up. Excessive kilovolt potential and excessive film fog, which I'll be telling you the later. I'll tell you about the film fog in the coming slides. Film fog. All these causes insufficient contrast. This is a radiograph with insufficient contrast. This is film fog. Film fog, see we are not able to see the radiolucent or the radio opaque regions. It appears too foggy. This is called as a film fog. What are the reasons for film fog? Improper safe lighting. What are the improper safe lighting? First one is improper filter. Second is excessive bulb wattage. Third is inadequate distance between the safe light and the work surface. Fourth is prolonged exposure to safe light. See, film fog can appear due to improper filter. The filter has to be fine, good. Second one, the bulb wattage should be less. It should not be of a high wattage. Excessive bulb wattage causes film fog. Third is inadequate distance between the safe light and the work surface. Don't keep the film very close to the safe light. Keep it slightly 6 inches away from the safe light in check. Otherwise, you have the film fog appearing. Inadequate distance between the safe light and the work surface. And next is prolonged exposure to safe light. Don't expose the film for a long time. It happens to appear as film fog. Don't expose the film for a long time to the safe light. Just check it and get it back. Otherwise, the film fogs. Second is due to the light leak. I told you light leak could be due to cracked safe filter light. The safe light, there could be a crack in the safe light filter. There could be light from doors. There could be light from ventilators or other sources. Any light leak can cause film fog. And overdevelopment. Overdevelopment also causes film fog. This is a radiograph which is faulty. It is a film fog. Again, we have contaminated solution. Contaminated developer, contaminated fixer can cause film fog. Deteriorated film. Films which are stored at high temperature. Films which are stored at high humidity. Films which are exposed to radiation and outdated films. Exposed to radiation films. See, whenever you are taking an intraoral periapical radiograph, don't put them in your pocket. Take only the radiograph to be exposed shoot it, process it and then come out. Don't take two to three radiographs with you. Otherwise, they get exposed to radiation which causes again as a film fog. 
outdated films which has passed the expiry date also causes film fog coming to dark spots or lines fingerprint contamination dark spots or lines happens due to fingerprint contamination protective wrapping paper sticking to film surface film in contact with tank or another film during fixation film contaminated with developer before processing excessive bending of film static discharge to film before processing excessive roller pressure during automatic processing dirty rollers in automatic processing i'm talking about the dark spots or lines when does this happen whenever there is fingerprint contamination when you are not supposed to test the film while you are processing it dark spots or lines will happen i'll show you the slide later on protective wrapping paper you have the black wrapping paper surrounding the film if that is sticking to the film i mean happens you get dark spots or lines third film in contact with tank when you put the film into the developing solution if it comes in contact with the tank or another film during fixation film contaminated with developer before processing see only after you shoot the film it has to be put into the developer even before the if it comes into contact with the developer we might have dark spots or lines excessive bending of film see to that the films are not bent much otherwise it causes dark lines static discharge of film before processing you are not supposed to hold two or three films together i told you excessive roller pressure during automatic processing that is this happens in automatic processing where is excessive pressure during processing it causes dark lines or spot dirty rollers again this is in automatic processing when you roll the rollers over the film if it is dirty it can cause dark spots or lines this is a radiograph fingerprint contamination film contact with tank wall during fixation these are again faulty radiographs fingerprint i told you we are not supposed to test the film while you are processing and film contact with tank wall during the fixation if it comes into contact with the tank that particular area will not get fixed next is light spots light spots can happen due to film contaminated with fixer before processing even before the film is fixed if it comes into processing it happens that is light radiograph or light spots or dots which are able to see there that artifact film contaminated with fixer before processing you have to put it in the developer and then into the fixer if it comes into fixer before that this artifact can be seen film in contact with tank or another film during development if the film comes into contact with tank or another film this can cause this error and excessive bending of film can cause light spots on the film this is the light spots next is yellow or brown stains yellow or brown stains can be seen on the radiograph due to depleted developer depleted fixer insufficient washing and contaminated solutions see to that the developer is good fine fixer is also fine and insufficient washing that is after developing see to that the film is washed properly in flowing water the film has to be washed properly insufficient washing causes yellow or brown stains see to that after developing put the water into the water wash it well then put it in the fixer and again wash insufficient washing causes yellow or brown stains fourth is a contaminated solution contaminated solution can be either developer or fixer solution can cause yellow or brown stain which is again a faulty radiograph next blurring of the radiograph what do you mean by blurring blurring means the edges are not sharp the details are not fine blurring of the radiograph happens due to movement of the patient if the movement of the patient that is if the patient moves the head movement of the x ray tube if the collimator is moved double exposure if the same film is exposed twice i'll show you later on if the same film is exposed twice to the radiation and fourth is the movement of the film if the patient moves the film can cause blurring of blurring of the radiograph that is movement of the patient if the patient moves 
movement of the x-ray tube head if the collimator is moved or double exposure or if the patient moves the film in the oral cavity you get a blurred image the image will not be sharp there will be blurred image which is again a faulty radiograph next is radiographs with partial images top of the film not immersed in developing solution see to that the whole film has to be immersed into the developing solution if a part of it is not immersed you have the partial image radiographs with partial image second is misalignment of the x ray tube head which is called as cone cut this radiograph is of a cone cut that particular area of the radiograph is not exposed to the x rays at all we are able to see only the molars the molars are not seen here because that area is not exposed to the x-ray at all. This is misalignment of the x-ray tube head which is called as a cone cut which is again a faulty radiograph. Next is elongation of the x-ray image. I told you we have vertical angulation for the in bisecting angle technique. Whenever there is excessive I mean insufficient vertical angulation we have elongation of the image. When there is excessive vertical angulation, we have foreshortening of the X-ray image. Elongation is also a fault and foreshortening is also a fault. See to that proper angulations are maintained when you take the intraoral periapical radiograph when you are taking bisecting angle technique. Otherwise, we will have elongation of X-ray image. The image appears much more elongated than it has to be seen. And foreshortening is the image appears much shorter than the normal. Both elongation and foreshortening are again faulty radiographs. Next is black line due to excessive bending of the radiograph prior to its placement inside the patient's mouth. I told you during that discussion of the black line, don't bend the film too much. See to that the films are always kept in a place away from where you have been operating. Don't put them in your pockets. See, the, the excessive bending of the film causes dark line on the radiograph. When you process it, it appears as dark line. That is black line due to excessive bending of radiograph prior to its play, play, placement inside the patient's mouth. Even before you place into the patient's mouth, it is already bent. Because of this, this black line appears. Next is dot artifact. We have something known as the occlusal dot. The occlusal dot helps us to know the film orientation. When you get the radiograph to your hand, you should be able to say whether it is maxillary, mandibular, anterior, posterior, which most of you will be able to tell. But whether it belongs to right or left side depends on the dot. We have something known as the occlusal dot, which are able to see there, the black dot seen at the apex of first premolar. That has to be placed towards the occlusal aspect. Here it is seen in the periapical region. This is a dot artifact which is again a faulty radiograph. Occlusal dot should be placed towards the occlusal aspect which helps for the film orientation whether it belongs to the right side or left side. Next is tire track appearance. This happens when the film packet gets reversed in the oral cavity. When you take an intraoral periapical film you have the Indication given there saying this side or opposite side towards the tube. Opposite side towards the tube means opposite side should face the collimator. In case you reverse it, you happen to see this tire track appearance which is again a faulty radiograph. Inside the intraoral film packet, we have the film covered on either side by black wrapping paper. The side away from the collimator, we have the lead foil. The function of the lead foil is to absorb the scattered radiation. This is the tire track appearance which is seen on the lead foil. That will be seen on the radiograph. Not only that, the radiograph appears much lighter because the X-rays have to pass the object. It has to pass the lead foil and then fall on the film for you to get a viewable or a interpretable image. So, track track appearance is due to the film packet reversed in mouth. If the film packet is reversed in mouth, we come across tire track appearance. We, it's also called as, where the arrow is shown, it's also called as herring bone defect. It's a faulty radiograph. It appears light as well as track track appearance is seen, which is again a faulty radiograph. 
Next is double exposure. In this radiograph, you are able to see the anterior as well as the posterior teeth. What has happened is, you have taken a radiograph of lower anteriors. Again, the same radiograph has been used to take radiograph of mandibular molars. We are able to see mandibular first molar and mandibular third molar. Second molar has been extracted. And the other radiograph shows us mandibular central incisors, lateral incisors and the canine. What has happened is the same film has been exposed once to the anterior teeth, mandibular anterior teeth. The same radio film has been used to expose the posterior teeth. Because of this, we have double exposure to images overlapping each other, which is again a faulty radiograph. See, whenever you come across faulty radiographs, you should know the reason why it is faulty, how it can be rectified, why it is faulty. It could be due to the technical errors, it could be due to the processing errors, it could be due to the angulation, elongation, foreshortening, double exposure, depleted, double, whatever could be the fault. You should be able to identify what the fault is and how you can rectify it. Hope you have all understood the faulty radiographs. Thank you.